From the LA Times today, Governor Brown signed a minimum wage law, which is going to raise the minimum wage in California up to ten dollars an hour by 2016. I thought it already was ten dollars an no, hour. No, it's not. That's how screwed up I am. <laughs> yeah. Now this is interesting, though. The wage hike is going to go in two different phases. Uh, the first phase will be eight dollars an hour. Will be lifted to nine dollars an hour in 2014, and then it will go up to the full ten dollars an hour on 20 in 2016. Yes. January 1st. So you know it's going to take some time to phase that in. Of course, to give businesses, as they say, time to plan and prepare. But naturally, there's been a quite a bit of, uh, of pushback. Pushback against this idea of raising the minimum wage. I like the governor says when he signed this bill, Governor Brown said that uh, it was his moral responsibility to give Californians a chance to earn a living wage. Look at that. I know. That sounds like a Christian right guy, right? But it's not. It's coming from the left. So we always forget about the Christian left. They're out there. So they are. There are some people who actually believe that, you know, that social justice movement <laughs> yes. is part of the, the Christian yeah. church. They're just, you know, been shunted off to the side you don't recently. Get, for whatever reason, they don't put a news camera in their face anymore, anymore those people. Yeah, and I was also impressed by uh, Governor Brown here in California, again, uh, that he actually talked about in income inequality and the change yes. over the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. Essentially, when you look at graphs from the 1970s of, you know, wage increases, CEO pay, uh, middle class wages, uh, um, you know, union involvement, that all of these graphs have the same inflection point. They all start about 1975, 1980, and that's about the time that Reagan went into office and started laying waste to all of the that's programs that had helped raise the middle class to be the economic juggernaut that we used to be yes. uh, in the United States. Well, he fired PATCO, right, which were the air traffic controllers. They went out. He His fired, first major union first busting. Big things busted the union. Yeah. That sent a chill through union organizing. And, you know, if you, you can chart, you can take another chart and look at the union participation and the income disparity. And the less union participation is, the greater the income disparity. The less of the uh, profits that the uh, middle class is uh, enjoying. And, you, you know, the thing that used to be that productivity used to be tied to pay. Right. right. So as the more you produce the for more the more value you produce for your company, the higher your wages the used higher, to go. That is no longer the case. That's right. They've remained flat since basically the 1980s. That's correct. And, and if and if and we we've gotten way more productive, our workers are way more productive than they were. And in fact, like if we kept the same uh, pr production uh, rate a in the 1980s, if we had that today, we would have to have 20 million more workers in our economy to do all the work. But we don't have those 20 million because we're more productive. Well, and that's also part of the reason how we got to, at least the middle class got to the situation that we did in the, the financial meltdown, you know, that people's wages were not rising, right. and yet we were being uh, marketed credit, basically right, credit financing mm -hmm. for, for the kind of lifestyle that people had right. been accustomed to having with their re, you know, wage yes. increases in the yes. previous time. And so everybody got into debt and it was like, oh, you know, 9-11 happens and George Bush says, go shopping. So yes. everybody went shopping and we yes. had all this, you know, great handouts as far as, uh, you know, people would get 10 and 15 credit card offers in the mail and took advantage of college those opportunities. Kids. Oh, They're yeah. Giving credit cards at college. Well, you know, and everything has fell apart all at once and there has not been an increase in wage since then to sort of make up for right uh, it was like hey the the plutocrats de deficit financing i think the plutocrats aren't sharing their largesse with the workers well we got another way for you to make money we'll uh we'll create a housing bubble and you can take second mortgages out and then you can finance your life that way until this all comes crashing down the government will bail us out and you'll be screwed and that's where we are right now yes so that's where we are right now governor brown says he's going to raise the minimum wage by 10 to ten dollars by 2016 and of course there's a pushback. Small business owners' hopes have once again been dashed with a stroke of Governor Brown's pen, said uh, John Kabatek, executive director of the National Federation of Independent Business in California. He said the new law will only cement California's status as the worst place to start a business. Which is and a I, total lie. I think that's what Bill Gates, I think that's how yeah, he Yeah, somebody feels. go tell Silicon Valley Steve that Jobs, California is a terrible place to start Tesla. a business. Tesla. That's why Tesla went to Texas instead of Silicon Valley. Oh, wait. So, <laughs> that, and they didn't, right? So they're here. And that's bull. So this is all bullshit. So there's no studies. Every study ever done by any reputable study uh, group showed that raising minimum wage has no effect on decreasing jobs, okay? So it doesn't happen. I, I like how in, in here, I, I, I highlighted this, 
because they, they, they went in the, at the L.A. Times. By the way, the L.A. Times, they're not sure. They're not sure what, what happens. They're not sure if you raise the minimum wage. They're not sure. They have to give us both sides because they're not sure. As if the fucking jury isn't in on this already. As if there's no data at as all if there's no showing data. that, hey, when you actually pay people more, it helps the economy because there's more money throughout the economy actually flowing through the economy. Yeah, as, which has been proven over and over and over again that that is the case. LA Times, still not sure. So they have to give us both sides of the story. So they went and interviewed some business leaders or business owners who were against the minimum wage hike. And here's uh, this guy named Asunder Ramani. He's a general manager of West Wind Properties. It's a real estate firm in Burbank, California. And he said he typically hires about four students over the summer to help out in the warehouse. Not anymore. Not anymore. They're going to raise the minimum wage. He says... Uh, I'd probably hire fewer students next summer. You probably would, and you probably just would let some of the stuff you needed to get done not get done. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, we've got some shit happening that I need to get done, but I'm not going to pay it. Ah, it's not worth it. That is such bullshit. You are going to get the work done that you need to get done. And by the way, Burger King, they've already have higher wages in San Francisco. They have to pay health care to their workers. They all, they have, they, guess what? Burger King, McDonald's, they're not pulling out of San Francisco. No, they're, they're trying not leaving. to get into San Francisco. <laughs> that's right. So, th th so that's all bullshit. That's well, you know, you can also look at a real world example In N Out Burger, which is okay. a, a famous franchise, privately owned franchise here in California and uh, in the West. And they actually pay their, their employees a living wage. Um, they treat them well, they give them good benefits, and they have very low employee turnover, and they have no problem making lots of money in California. So this is a real world example. And we have lots of others where, you know, maybe you could say that the CEO might not get quite as high a bonus this year that he would normally get. Maybe he'll have to cut off a couple thousand dollars, but that couple thousand dollars can actually go to employees who then put that money throughout the economy and actually buying goods. And when your economy is 70% consumer spending driven, you need consumers to spend money. That's, that's how growth works. That's how the economy actually works. And that's how our mature economy works. Yes. And this is a great, this goes to show you who are the job creators. The job creators are the middle class people who create a demand for things, right? Because don't forget, corporations don't need confidence. They don't need certainty in the market. Corporations are sitting on $5 trillion right now. And if $5 trillion doesn't give you confidence, I suggest dance lessons. They're not investing in it. But here is why when, when corporations hire, here's when they hire. When there is a demand for their products and services that they cannot meet with the current amount of employees, that it's the last thing they want to do is hire people, but they will if the demand for their products and services are high enough. And that's the and who creates demand for product and services? Workers, middle class people with cash in their pockets. And that's why the hiring isn't happening the way it's supposed to, because the people who create demand don't have the money in their pockets to create the demand. All the money is being hoarded at the top of the food chain. The plutocrats have all the money. I'll give you an example of a, they had uh, Secretary Paulson was on uh, Press the Meet with David Gregory last week. <laughs> And they were talking about, and I, and I turned to my wife and I said, that's Hank Paulson. He used to be the chairman of Goldman Sachs. Yep. Then he was the secretary of the treasury under George Bush who designed the TARP program. He made $700 million in the stock market. When he left Goldman Sachs, $700 million, one guy. Now, you know where that money goes? That doesn't go in the economy. That's sitting offshore somewhere. That's sitting in his pocket. That's not being invested. That's not being spent. That's dead money. And that's what's wrong with concentration of money at the top. It's dead money. They don't create jobs. They don't reinvest it. Do you know who spends that money? Is when you give the money to the workers who created that. That's when the economy, and it helps everybody. Go watch the band TED Talk, right? That, right? Have you ever watched the band <laughs> I have TED not. Talk? One TED Talk in the whole history of TEDs got banned, and it was a guy who said the exact same thing. He is a millionaire who said, you know, I, I don't create jobs. He goes, I, I can only buy a certain amount of cars. I only buy three or four pairs of jeans a year. He goes, so that's bullshit that I'm going to create jobs. What creates jobs is when there's a demand for a product, and then we show up and we start a business or a company to meet that demand. And so go out look up at Band TED Talk. So this goes perfectly exactly. with the next story, which is Walmart. Guess what? So Walmart lately uh, has been cutting. The, so they have the worst business practices, right, for their employees. They overwork you, underpay you, don't give you benefits. 
And it turns out that's not good for business because they just found out that uh, Walmart's sales have been plummeting ever since they decided to cut back on their full-time employees and hire temps. Their sales have been plummeting. Yeah, they have an overflow of inventory. A lot of business news coming out now about how Walmart has inventory stacking up in their stores. They have disheveled shelves yes. because they don't have enough workers and they don't have enough people who can afford to buy what they're selling. So they're actually cutting orders two quarters ahead, which in business terms, when you're talking about you know solid goods that people have to ship and buy and stuff, cutting your orders and your inventory two quarters in advance is really unusual. Yes. And that's a kind of a, you know, with the business articles that I was reading on this uh, said that this was a very scary kind of idea for a lot of the analysts. They were really shocked that Walmart was going to, to go to this level of cutbacks on their inventory. Well, they Couldn't happen to better people. Reuters did a, Walmart, Reuters did a survey of 52 Walmart stores and they found that most of those stores were hiring only temp workers. So that they don't have to pay any kind of benefits. They can let them right. go at will um, and not have to have any sort of issues when it comes to employment fairness or anything like that because temp workers are, I think, under a different sort yes. of, uh, of employment guidelines. So it turns out that this business model of hiring temp workers, providing absolutely no support for the people who generate your profits, your workers and your stores. This is the number one retailer, by the way. Remember that. It's the number one retailer in America. <laughs> and they're... Who, exclusively temp workers, right? So this is, so it turns out not only is the Walmart, this is from uh, Think Progress, not only is the Walmart model bad for workers and bad for business, it's also terrible for the taxpayer. Now we know this, right? Because what happens, they don't pay them enough, they don't provide them benefits, those people still get sick and they still have to eat. So they applied for food stamps and they applied for Medicaid. And it's been uh, shown that for each store, each Walmart store, the taxpayers have to support them $1.75 million in public benefits to their the one Walmart store's employees, almost $2 million a year in public benefits. The taxpayers, the taxpayers are paying taxpayers for. are paying the number one retailer, making $80 billion a year. Yeah, and you know, and it doesn't have to be this way. Costco is a, is a similar type of way. warehouse store, and they have a 19% increase in their profits over the last quarter over Walmart when Walmart's uh, uh, profits sank. And what do they and pay they, their workers? They pay their workers $21, $21.96 cents an hour. That's the average worker wage, uh, wa uh, wage and that's Costco. about 40% more than Walmart employees make. And their business is booming. Right. And the way that they put it is that they generate more revenue and profit per worker in spite of paying them more. How does that work? Mm. Mm. How, is that like magic? You know, what I do they do? Mm. It might be that because they pay their workers more and their workers are able to actually participate in the economy and they don't have high turnover, it actually shows that if you treat your workers well, you might actually have a better business. Your workers work harder. It's a concept.